call me crazy, but in today's video, I'm going to be deliberately ruining my audio signal to see if I can restore it in any way, shape, or form using only of the effects that are found within Premiere Pro. Should be a good challenge, let's dive right in. For this challenge, what I'm gonna do is record my audio signal clean, like what you see right here, and then I'm going to record separately some noise from the fan. From there, what I'll do is export my clean and noise tracks together so they are just one wave file. And I'm gonna be using the effects in Premiere Pro on that combined wave file. This way we can see what a clear signal sounds like versus what I've edited. So to start off with, I'm gonna use the essential sound panel within Premiere Pro. If you don't see this, you could go to your audio workspace. So if I go to window, workspace is audio, or you could just go to window, essential sound, and that will bring up your essential sound window. Let me play you the clean sample first. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. And now I'm going to play the audio file with the fan noise added. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. The first thing I like to do when repairing audio is highlight a specific section of that clip and keep looping it so I can hear it as I repair the clip. So I'll hide the, the clip, I'll hit the question mark key on my keyboard and that creates my in and outs. Now, in order to loop this, I'm gonna move my brackets over here to just the noise. The next thing is this little icon right here. It's the loop playback. If you don't have this icon inside your program monitor, all you have to do is go to this little plus sign, click it, click and drag loop playback onto your customized button editor. So I'm gonna hit okay and that's highlighted blue. So now I can hit play on my keyboard and it will keep looping this section, watch. Let me go over to my essential sound and with the clip highlighted, I'm going to tag this as dialogue because it's dialogue, like that. With the clip highlighted, let's start with de-hum because that's the thing that stood out to me the most. I'm gonna hit play on my keyboard and I'm gonna hit de-hum. And immediately it's already started to sound better. When you're de-humming something by default, they only give you two frequencies where they are going to de-hum or take out that frequency. If you're in the Americas, they make a cut at 60 Hertz, but everywhere else in like Europe, Asia, and Africa, you have it at 50 Hertz. So if you're in any of those places, start with 50 Hertz, but I'm in North America, so I'm going to do 60 Hertz. If I wanna add more, man, that sounds better already. Let me see what happens if I were to reduce rumble. That's already clearing up some more. Let's see what happens if I reduce the noise. I think this will do the most. Ha, huh, that's crazy. It almost like just completely gets, it's, it's basically gone. Let's see how good the dialogue is though. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. It's very tinny. So let's see how much we can bring back and still get some more of my voice in there. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. If you want to hear that signal without the fan, here's what it sounds like. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. Here's our edited with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. It's not bad, it's not bad. So that's using the essential sound panel, but let's see if I can do an even better job by using specific effects found in the effects menu applied to the WAV file. So now we're back to the original bad file. And what I'm going to do is go to my effects menu. Underneath audio effects, noise reduction, restoration, there are four options. Click remover, dehummer, denoise, and deverb. So what I'm going to be primarily using is dehummer and denoise, and let's see how far we can get with that. The first one I'm gonna try is dehummer, and I'll pull on the denoise, but I'll turn it off for right now. And let's just look at the dehummer so you can see the parameters of that. With the dehummer, you can see here, it starts out at 60 Hertz and it cuts the frequency at 60 Hertz. And then it also cuts up to eight harmonics of 60 Hertz. And for those that are wondering, a harmonic as defined by Yamaha.com is a sound wave that has a frequency that is an integer multiple of the fundamental tone. And that definition will make more sense once I start to add in more harmonics that I'm cutting out. You'll hear a chord start to build from that fundamental tone. So number of harmonics, I'm just gonna turn this to one. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is only output the hum. 
if you're listening to this on a phone right now, you're probably not gonna hear this, but in my headphones, I can actually hear a low rumble. What I'm gonna do is take this frequency and sweep it across that whole spectrum that you see here on the screen and listen for the moment when the signal really stands out or that hum really starts to resonate in the speakers. Right there. Uh, again, whoa, there we have it. And that frequency right here is 112.7. And I'm going to play this again. And I think it's just a little bit off, just 112. So getting to the exact decimal point will help me pinpoint that hum even more. So notice what happens if I just type in 112. It goes down a little bit. If I type 111, it has this pulsating tone. It's not as strong. So I know I'm close, but I'm not at the peak of the hum that I want to cut out of the frequency spectrum. Now I'm going to do 112.5. Notice how it's still pulsating, so I'm not exactly on the, the, the tone that I want to cut. Not the exact frequency, but if we go back to 112.7, it's just consistently a really loud tone. So at this point, I want to start adding harmonics. So I'm going to hit play on this again and start to listen to the signal as I add the harmonics in and you'll hear the chords start to form. Isn't that cool? And to be honest, using a dehummer and hearing those harmonics is one of the most beautiful contradictions because you are restoring or you're trying to get rid of noise. You're trying to get rid of this hum, but it turns out the hum that you're trying to get rid of is this structured chord that you could hear. Kind of neat. I, I don't know if that really makes sense, but let's let's continue. So here's with the dehummer off. And that's the hum that we got rid of. Still hear a little hum in there. So what I'm gonna do, look up uh, my effects, look up parametric equalizer, drag that in. And remember, I haven't done any denoising yet. I'm gonna go to edit. So it's gonna hit the dehummer first and then it's gonna hit my parametric equalizer. But what I wanna do is find that hum. Looks like it's about right here. So in order to pull a specific frequency down or do a frequency cut with the parametric equalizer, I'm going to go to one of my nodes right here. So node number one, take the Q, which is the width and make it really narrow. And then I'm gonna turn up the noise, just like we were only isolating the hum before. This will help us find that frequency. And I'm gonna kind of move it along to pinpoint where that lower end hum is. There we go. And now, if I cut that, I've now cut that lower end hum. Now let's move on to the denoise. So let me uncheck denoise, hit the edit here on my effects controls window and see what we get. Already it sounds better. So let me see how much noise reduction I can get away with not putting in there because the more you put in, the tinier it's gonna sound. So if I go to 100%, the fan noise isn't gonna be there anymore. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan, but it sounds heavily processed. So what I want to do is kind of back the amount off until it sounds a little bit more acceptable. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. I'd say that's okay. So here is the moment of truth. Let me play back all the different versions for you so you can hear them back to back without any interruptions. I'll start with the clean version, then I'll move into the version that has the fan added in. I'll go to the essential sound and then I'll end with the one that we just did using the effects straight from the effects panel and manipulating the audio that way. Here we go. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. This is my VO audio signal combined with the fan. So in conclusion, I think using the Essential Sound Panel is a great way to do quick edits for noise restoration. But if you wanna go a little bit more in depth, if you're just sticking to 
plugins within Premiere Pro, then go to the effects panel and look underneath the noise reduction and restoration folder that automatic click remover, the dehummer, the denoise, and deverb will probably be the best bet for more manipulation of your noise reduction. Now, I didn't even touch on the fact that you can send your audio clips over to Adobe Audition. And on top of that, there are third-party plugins that you could download or purchase to use for things like this, which again, I didn't do that because the whole point of this challenge was to use the plugins available to you by default within Premiere Pro. Let me know down in the comments if you agree that my consent it's about the essential sound panel is for those quick edits and if you want to get a little bit more in depth just use the effect itself on the clip and if you do want to see more of my audio editing tutorials or just audio features within Premiere Pro I have a video about the noise gate right here until next time my name's Javier Mercedes I hope you're out there living a life of abundance bye